pocket aids in the small blind. Well, this is a tricky one. Um, no, because he made it three big blinds and his low jack I will have to fold here. I play a raise or fold strategy in the small blind here. Pocket jacks, high jack against an open from low jack. We know that he only has 12 big blinds, so um, yeah, we will obviously get it in against this player. I still had to make it around 3x here, um, although to be honest, I, well, when I made the bet, I did not exactly see that he uh, was so short. Um, this is a tricky one, a player, let's see, a good short stack player, um, I still think I can't, I can't fold here and he's so short, I mean, what does he have, ace-king? and queens plus against that range i am quite smoked but i still have to call here and unfortunately now i will pretty much have to get it in here at this spr of just like 1.4 or so but i can't really get myself to fold pre-flop um he makes it quite small we could now just try to get it in the problem is i just i just won't uh, I'll, I'll still just call oh now he has the ace okay this is now a really bad card for us um just because if he had ace king or even ace queen uh we now lose to it but looks like he has kings or queens and there is another ace, not great either. Unfortunately, I think we will just lose to kings or queens, whether he bets or not. Uh, he checks again, yeah. I mean, I could try, but I, I just don't think, especially with a paired ace now, there is nothing I can do here. I will just have to check and yeah, I lose to pocket queens. So yeah, as soon as that ace came, there um it was pretty obvious that we have no chance of winning this pot i wonder whether i should have folded pre-flop to that four bet because it it had to be quite strong but on the other hand i just couldn't really fold there i'll have to look it up in the solver so I had to cut out a few hands because I just didn't get any playable cards. Here we have a limper and another limper, but all we have here is uh, some back doors and four high. So if anyone sneezes at the pot, we will fold. And this is more than a sneeze, a pot sized bet from the limper. So definitely a fold. 9-8 suited, you can go either way. I just don't really like opening these hands out of position, so I just fold. King-Jack suited now on the button is a playable hand. Let's see if we get raised. Ooh, I was going to say I'm going to 3-bet this, but he makes it 4 eggs. So I will just call, not a good flop for us. He goes half pot, we don't even have a back door to go with and his seabed percentage is quite low, so this is unfortunately a fold. Yeah, if I had had a back door, I would have considered it, but without the back door and just king high on that board is just not great jack 10 suited i do like opening from under the gun we have a passive player here but still it's low jack versus high jack on a nine high board he now pots it I mean, I do have two overs and the backdoor flash draw, but he is such a passive player. 19-6, I just think I have to fold here. Pocket eights on the button. 
this will be a hand that will definitely play and I am happy to raise this one even though we're on the button so we could definitely just flat call it but I do like raising it and this is a player who has rather passive stats so if we get four bet we're probably not in great shape and sample size is over 300 yeah and also he makes it quite big here so he could have made it 18 or 19 <sighs> i'm getting two to one but i th i just think this is such a passive player uh, and he raced from under the gun he four bets from under the gun so i just think i'll make an exploitative fold here if i call even against good gto players that's not a play that will print money it's probably about break even and against a player like this one who is rather passive i think um it's uh it's an easy fold to put it this way here queen eight off would actually be slightly below what gto suggests to open in the small blind queen nine i think is the lowest one but um against a tight passive player i'm happy to open it here we don't have a lot going for us but yeah because he's tight passive and rather straightforward i I'm happy to see that and we took it down. Here we have a limper, so very happy to open this one to 3.3x. Gonna tag him as a recreational player. And let's see what he does. Well, he's tanking. And he calls, not a great flop for us. We don't have much going. I could see bet it with my two overs, but without even a back door, I decide to just check it. If he bets out now, that will be a rather merged range. If he half pots it, that is a bit of a bluffy size. Uh and we have six outs maybe but i just think we don't have a lot going and this is a situation where i think it's not a mistake to fold i don't think it would be a big mistake to call either but yeah we just whiffed that flop and the turn as well and the board pair too and we might have faced uh, bet on the river as well so i decided to fold here um i'm gonna go small against a passive recreational player which he most likely is now this is a really bad card not only because it brings the flush in but uh, also pairs the board this one is not great either I mean, what do we beat here? Can we get any value from weaker kings? But what would that be? I just don't think there is much we can do, unfortunately. And yeah, wow, look at this. <laughs> he had a full house. So um, yeah, we got lucky there that we didn't bet the river. But yeah, I just thought there is not much we could... Um, have gotten and note now like in this hand here he could have uh, bet the river he could have check raised us on the flop and he would get, have gotten a lot more money but he played it so passively that he got the minimum and we lost the minimum so yeah that was actually quite good here we have a limper and another limper so i'm going to make it quite big here now 4.8 the computer is a bit slow here this morning yes so fish calls us unfortunately we have the ace there which is not great um i still think i want to bet here 
I'm going to go a little less than third pot with the kings. It's just because I don't want him to then start blasting. Well, when I say that, and now he starts blasting. Uh, at this point, I mean, we beat some random flush draws, but I think, actually, unfortunately, our kings are not a great continue here. If I had the king of spades, maybe I would have. But yeah, this is just a session where not a, long, a lot has gone our way, unfortunately. Yeah, so as you can see, I do overfold here sometimes against players where I just don't think that they have a lot of bluffs. A6 in the small blind is definitely a hand that we can open. No action though. Ace Queen suited on the button, obviously an open. And it will be a continue if we get raised as well. Even ace queen off would be a continue on the button. So this player is either tanking whether he should three bet us as a bluff or he is just distracted. Most probably the latter. Queen do suited will be a defend against either of these two positions now. So as I said, I will call this one. Yeah, not something great here. I just go and build a small bet here. Now we picked up the flush draw and I think I want to overbet this. The jack absolutely doesn't hit his range. Like, yes, he could of course have jack with any other. Uh, and now here after he called the over bet and we have the diamonds I think we have to give up unfortunately and yeah he only had king high. He called an over bet with king high there on the turn. That was ambitious but he was right because we were bluffing. I wonder if he had called a river bet there. King it off. That's the worst king that I will open on the button. A screen off. We open. Not getting much action. Jack-8 suited in the big blind. This is a hand that I would 3-bet against a button open. Against an early position open, I still think it's good enough to call. We have the jack-high flush draw now. Obviously, this board is better for him. He checked now if we didn't get some showdown value here with the jack I would have bet now. Mm, I mean we're losing against a weak king or a queen but we beat something like tens, nines, eights. Um, I decide to check this one. And yes, we do win indeed against, what did he have? Yeah, pocket nines. Um, it's possible that he would have called a block bet there. But I thought there is still a lot of king X and especially queen X in his range, or even something like ace jack, um, that it would have been quite thin to go for value on the river. 6-4 suited against a button raise. This is good enough. And we flop a flush draw. We also have a backdoor straight draw. Look at this. Now, not only do we have a flush, but also a straight flush draw. 
I could go with an over a bet here, but I decide not to now that the board pairs. Unfortunately, this is not great, but I still think we can go for the over bet here. Unfortunately, he folds. I still think it was right to, to go big there on the river. Pocket sixes in the big blind. This will be a defend against any position. Definitely against the button. He is a very passive player as well from the stats so far. So this is a hand I against early position I would definitely donk here. I'm donking just because I think if he has two over cards he might call. Yeah, I mean, I brought this up on myself, didn't I? Uh, he's a very passive player, actually. Uh, makes it quite big as well in being in position. So, okay. Well, now I made this play that a lot of recreational players make, uh, especially in live poker. Um, and if he's good enough, he should know that, and then he can just bluff raise me there. But I just think his stats look so tight and passive that I actually think he was not um, bluffing there. Here, 10-9 off uh, on the button against Limper. I just decided to isolate him. King 10 off against an early position raise, especially from a tight player, and especially with a three big blind raise, is just a fold. So I think a lot of players would have called there, but I just don't think this is a profitable move. Ace King off opening that from the low jack is a profitable move, though. And we get min clicked here by this guy. Uh, I mean, whatever uh, it is very difficult to 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 play against these min clicks but i still think we have to to go big here ah uh, he called very very quickly i'm gonna go small here against a recreational player and <laughs> yeah you see i mean he snap called my four bet and then folded to a small continuation bet on that flop so i don't know what he had there here i'm gonna fold pocket threes in the small blind as i said before i only play a raise or fold strategy not always to be fair there are some exceptions but with pocket threes i would just never flat those Jack nine off could be a defend against late position opens, but definitely not against an early position open to 3.4 big blinds. That is a very easy fold. So here we have a playable hand. So in the cutoff, I always open to 2.2x. That's just standard. So in terms of opening sizes, I go either 2 or 2.2 in the low jack and high jack. I just randomize really randomly, not making it dependent on my hand, but more like who is in the blinds. And sometimes I just decide to just go bigger or smaller. Then I go 2.2 in the cutoff, 2.5 on the button, and three big blinds in the small blind. 10-8 suited in the small blind is definitely an open. Now we have bottom pair. Um, I don't think I can fold out a anything better. He now makes it quite big. I still have to just call the here. If he bets again, I probably have to fold. Yeah, he does. He goes two-thirds. There's not much I can do against this bet 
Ace nine off, bottom of my opening range in the cutoff, but not if a tight player in the hijack opens, or if anyone opens from any position for that matter. Queen seven suited against the lower jack raise would have been a tight one here against the three bet. I'm definitely folding. So obviously opening ace five offsuit in the small blind. Jack five suited is also a hand that we can open on the button. This is pretty much the lowest jack, possibly jack four suited against weaker players or tighter players. And we're getting three bet by a tight player who only has the three bet percentage of 4% over 113 hands. Definitely not uh, something I would want to continue against. King 7 suited is an optional raise under the gun. It's probably more than 50% fold, but here I decided to just open it because we have the button who is a recreational player. But we get called by the small blind. And I will bet this, even though we don't even have back doors, but we had one over, and <laughs> that did it for me in this case. Queen Jack off, the cutoff is definitely an open. And I, on this board, I want to go really small with my C bet here. And we're getting min clicked. We basically don't have anything. Um, we have to fold this one, unfortunately. I decided to cut out a few minutes here because I was being dealt such terrible hands that I didn't want you to have to suffer through the same pain as me. But now we have King Jack suited in the cutoff, and we decide to obviously open this one. This player has tanked before, so I think he's probably multi-tabling and is really busy on other tables. So let's see if we can have some better cards now. Okay, pocket aces is a playable hand, and there is a raise by this player, who well, I don't have much history with, only 10 hands. We'll just go our, with our standard raise to 11 here in the small blind, which I would do with a lot of hands. We get called. This board, I mean, I will bet two-thirds on it. We do have the Ace of Diamonds. I could obviously have checked this one. The Queen, uh, this is not great now, because the Jack, if he has tens, Jacks, Queens, any of those hands now beat us. Obviously, Jack-10, Queen-Jack, Queen-10. There are quite a few hands that could beat us. Okay, what do we beat at this point? We beat a 10, we beat a Queen. We don't beat a Jack, which was top pair. So I think I have to go for a, a value bet here. And he has the straight. Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess that's also... A possibility. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, eight, nine. I mean, yeah, he flopped an open ender, then got the the straight on the turn. Yeah, and I mean, but you see, this is not a great player. I'll label him as very recreational because he should have definitely raised at some point definitely on the river if not before 
Okay, Ace Jack suited, finally a playable hand again after I had to cut out some more minutes of footage here. Not being helped by the deck much today. This is most likely a recreational player. Um, we do have something going on for us here. A couple of back doors and an overcar to the queen. So I think it's fair to go for it here. Not great with uh, clubs coming in. Three, four, five, six now. There is straight draw and flush draw. And I think if he checks to me, I can't even really go for a bet, but he doesn't even check goes for half pot. I mean, this, like, what are his bluffs here? Basically nothing. It's either a queen or something better. So I have to fold, unfortunately. King jack off on the button. Yeah, we will definitely raise this one up against Whiplash. And we get a fold. Good. Ace check off in the early position is a raise. Ace 10 off is also a raise. However, it mixes with folds in GTO, which was surprising for me to see. But yeah, it's just not such a great hand. And Ace check off is only marginally profitable as well. Ace three suited, however, is a hand that we can open from any position, and it is a small money maker. King nine offsuit. We would potentially have defended it against a late position raise. So as I said, ace three suited. We can open from any position, including the low jack, but against this sort of action, I do not want to continue. Ace 10 off on the button, obviously a raise. Nah, this is a player. Let's see. Uh, I mean, he is quite loose, but then he's got 49.18, which means that he doesn't raise a lot, which is why I decided to fold here. We can definitely go for a raise. King-Queen off is not the best hand for three betting out of position, but it's good enough. Ace three offsuit, however, is not a hand that we can open from anywhere basically so i will open it in the small blind and on the button but ace four off is normally the cutoff uh, for opening the button and the small blind in gto terms here ace king suited obviously we'll have to raise it up i this is a very tricky size here i mean I go third pot here, um, but the problem is I didn't want to just go smaller, although I think I probably should have just gone to eight big blinds, um, just because he was only third, we were only 30 big blinds deep. King seven suited is definitely an open, and it could even be a bluff three bet. So if the hijack opens actually yeah or the cutoff i would have three bet in this particular case here we can go for a small c bet there's still a good chance that he folds now we pick up the gutter i could go for another bet but i decide not to and now with the board pairing again there's not much we can do here. He was fairly quick with a bet here. Looks like he has a nine. But yeah, like even a, I would even have folded an ace there because of his 
quick timing and the over bet, the combination of the two just doesn't make me very confident that we can bluff catch there. Queen 10 off, definitely an open here. And definitely a fold if we get raised, but we don't. Pocket jacks now, finally a playable hand again. Obviously opening and four betting in case we get three bet. Here, this is similar to the 955 hand earlier. I definitely want to see bet this one. Unfortunately, this time when we have the goods, they don't have anything. That's kind of how it goes in poker, isn't it? Is queen suited in the small blind? So let's raise this one up to our standard size. This player has not folded to a three bet yet. Zero out of two. If he four bets us, I was just gonna say, if that happens, we will definitely continue. Just wondering uh, how to do to continue here. Do we want to get it in with ace queen? Just not sure. I'll have to look this one up. I'm okay. So he just doesn't see bet this, which is a bit suspicious. Let's see. Now, I mean, what do we beat? What do we beat? We beat absolutely nothing. So this is definitely a hand I want to review later. But yeah, I just we just don't beat anything there with our ace high. Um, so no point really in calling post the Ace-3 suited in the big blind. This will be a defend against any position. Not against a 3-bet, though. Okay, so I'm going to play one last orbit now and then wrap it up for today and do a little bit of homework, a bit of an analysis. Here, this is a very, very tight player, but I'll still defend this, and we flop two pairs, which is amazing. I will obviously check to him now, because the board is still better for him. But now I am going to play for stacks, and yes, I will lose to kings, tens, king, ten. However, I definitely want to go big here as well because if he has aces or ace king or king queen i think that we can get him to call or put more money in even by raising i mean this gets even better we now have a house we still lose against other houses though um in this case yeah the question is do i want to slow play this now and then bomb the river, maybe. Yeah, I think I want to slow play this and give the impression that I have a flash draw because, yeah, this is exactly what's what he's going to do now. Um, and I will... I'll just raise him here again. Something like this. Actually, no, this is a bit too big. Let's go 34. And let's see what he does. He now folded. So he probably had aces or ace king or something like that and then decided to give up after I check raised him twice. But the thing was, he put more money in, whereas. I didn't want the flush to come in and then not getting any money from him. Which, of course, there was uh, an option always. 
that that would happen because we couldn't expect him to bet. But I typically find that a lot of players who are tight players, if you three bet them, um, or three bet, sorry, if you raise them on the flop and then you don't continue on the turn, they just think that you're on a draw and they will bet their good hands. Right, so this is it for today. Not the greatest session today, but uh, yeah, we were quite unlucky and I think the red line still looks all right here. We lost $29, but uh, tomorrow is a new day and we hope to run better next time. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of this and then see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.